Martha. Thank you. Now we've reached that point in the meeting where we are going to do evaluations. And as I understand, uh, Chait, you're uh, evaluating uh, a limpo speech. And so if you could come forward and uh, give us your evaluation of that speech, please. Olimpo, uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to evaluate your speech in the advanced uh, communicator series. The objective of the speech was to begin and end the speech with a humorous story while keeping the message a serious message. I believe you did open with a personal story. You shared the experience and conversation you had with your grandfather. And that gave a good perspective and you led us into the main theme of the topic which was to make sure you utilize your time as a bank account. And you painted a picture showing us how you went there uh, and then how you interacted with him. How well did the closing story emphasize the speech <coughs> <coughs> I think that's where I think uh, you didn't really share a story, a humorous story towards the end that was one of the main objectives of the speech. But you did tell us about different perspectives of using time. You shared some jokes about 401k, uh, the life gives you lemon, you make lemonade, but may suggested maybe we do tequila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then how uh, the frozen time is like frozen tequila in a desert, and how it evaporates. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, well received by the audience. And it was good uh, on your part. And then there are a few more questions. How effectively did the closing, closing story end the speech? And that's where I think if you could have added some more, a story. You had shared examples, but if you could have come up with a, a story, that would have helped meet the objective there. Were you comfortable and confident during the speak, telling the stories? I think, as always, we're confident and comfortable. And you always have great technique while uh, delivering your jokes. When you do punch lines, you pause and speed up. I think that was very well done. That's about. Thank you. That's about it. Thank you, Jake. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very thoughtful evaluation. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, evaluation is for Lori's speech, and uh, here uh, we'll be conducting that evaluation. Lori, it was an honor valuing your speech. Um, it's a very tough thing to do impromptu, five different topics, being on your feet and trying to organize it quickly. I thought it, you did a great job uh, with that. Um, some of the questions here, how effectively did the speaker organize his or her ideas? I think you organized it really, it was great. You went to each species and then you went into subspecies, so you tried to try to simulate in your brain like exactly how I want to organize this from a species topic, right? From whales to dolphins to sea lions and how they migrate and the different subtopics. So you organize it quickly so you could, you know, deliver really, really effectively. What pattern or patterns were used? Um, I think the facts, you stated a lot of facts. So when you went into these subtopics, when your organization, you went to facts on each of the topics that you're able to deliver. Um, you know, from whales and dolphins to sea lions to the to, to individual uh, species itself and the characteristics, you were able to go to those patterns because you had facts around them. Did he or sh she present a clear and definite message? Um, the message is clear to to your knowledge. I think you're very experienced in this area. You have great knowledge in the area, so you're able to quickly organize it in your brain. How well did the speaker draw upon his or her background of special knowledge? Of course, as I stated before, your knowledge and your expertise in this area is great. It's something that you love to do, you have passion about it, and you can tell when you speak about it, that passion comes up. Um, how did the speaker let the audience know that he or she was particularly knowledgeable in this subject area, as we talked about, just the facts, right? The facts were displayed many times, and the confidence in his or her authority to display the topic is all about the facts. Uh, we didn't bring too much opinion into the subject. Um, that was the next one. Did you bring based facts or opinion? It was all a lot of facts. 
so that can convey your confidence. Um, maybe a little bit more opinion, mm -hmm. just about some stories that you've had and you know things that you've seen out there while watching. May have helped a little bit more, but there was a lot of facts there, so there was a lot of confidence in there. And what was the audience's reaction? I think the audience is engaged with all the knowledge that you have. And at the end, when you clinched it, when you said, hey, anybody want to whale watch? I can hook it for free. <laughs> Again, got everyone reeled back in at the end. It was just like a sinker to get everyone engaged in. Overall, great job. Thank a you. lot of facts. And all right, thanks. And a very unusual thing, a huge pod of false killer whales. They they aren't black and white like the killer whales, but they were false. There was 40 to 50 pod size pod right off of Dana Point, and they have tons of pictures. It was really unusual. That's not a species that we see very often. Yeah. There you go. Uh, at Grammarian's report. Okay. Let's see. Sadly, no one used the word of the day. I guess I made it too oh. hard. <laughs> but nonetheless. Olympo, we had a couple fillers, um and us, a couple incomplete sentences on your speech, and the quote of uh, the lemons to lemonade eh, kind of got mangled every now and then, but, you know, you keep working on it, keep uh, working on it, it will come through. Okay. Uh, a couple of repeating of the words. Now, Lori, a couple, an eh and an um. Uh, maybe, because it is an impromptu speech, you had maybe a couple incomplete sentences, but other than that, very flowing. Good job. Martha, a couple ums, especially when I was grilling you. <laughs> uh, John, an um and a couple of repeating words. Other than that, Jay, clean. Myself, clean. <laughs> uh, here I heard an um. You heard an um? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be in charge. Okay. Uh, here okay. on your evaluation, uh, just a few ums. Uh, we all did good today. Yeah. Well, Excellent. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Timekeeper. Well, <laughs> there is a caravan. <laughs> Grand numerical error right there. Okay. I'm filling in for Scott. But, uh, yeah. Olympo, time is like a bouncing, uh, or time is like a bank account, bouncing a bank account, <laughs> uh, 6 minutes 25 seconds. Lori's bring it on, uh, 7 minutes 7 seconds. Um, Evaluation, shooting on the Olympo, 55. My evaluation, 227. Um, Olympo, Lori, reboot your website, uh, minute 16. Martha Karen, value our wolves and pants. Sorry, I'm trying to be used to Two minutes, two, uh, 27 <laughs> seconds. Shane and John, curling prima donna, uh, minute 51. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> that was great table topic. Yes, I did. That's a good job. And uh, now we have uh, the general evaluator, uh, Amy Sheehan. <laughs> Not for the dollar, but I'm going to say this was a great meeting, so I don't have to give a forward evaluation. <laughs> um, this meeting was really fun. I really enjoyed it, and I'm going to trip, so I'm going to stand back there. It just was really engaging. I think it was, I don't know if you guys here on this side have ever done anything like that with the role play thing. really liked how everybody got together and, and did it and worked in pairs, especially the first team that took no preparation or two speakers. So the basic things for the evaluation, did we start on time? Yes, we did. With some of the lectern, you know, welcome to our get two guests today. We did do a round of introductions, although, John, you came in late, so that's John White. And we gave information or had the people do their roles and responsibilities. So I'd say other than the great table topics, the thing that I really liked today was the fact that we had two advanced speeches, mm -hmm. which is really important for our club, for those who are following along in the Distinguished Club program. That's where we're, we have eight out of ten goals so far for this year, and the one thing that we do need is advanced speakers. So it's great to see people coming up here and doing the advanced advanced speeches. So we're, the club is hold on hope for you, Olympo. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Three more? Three more. Three more. Okay. And the other thing that for my things to improve on is just greater attendance. Although I did see a lot of people had in, in advance said they couldn't come and then we had a couple people just last minute that said we know they couldn't come. But generally we have pretty good attendance, but I'd like to see more attendance, which is probably going to segue into what you're talking about. And that is my evaluation. And the news I have, granted it's dated, but I got it today. Andrea Dowling, who is one of our members, had her son. Ooh. 
actually had her son on March 2nd, and we just found out today. So Nicholas Patrick Dowling was born at 11.25 p.m. March 2nd, 7 pounds, 1 ounce, 20.5 inches long. Wow. wow. That, so she must have, like, right when she went out, had her baby. The best part about that story is, I don't know if you know John and Andrea Dowling, but they couldn't decide on a baby's name, and so Andrea had said to me just before she went out, maybe they're going to have to do rock, scissors, paper in the, <laughs> in oh, the delivery so room. But they decided apparently on Nicholas Patrick Dowling, so the baby yeah, does I have like a name. <laughs> you forgot to give us our rating. I gave us a nine. Good. Yay. Yay. Um, I have a little announcement. What do we have Here next here? So I'm going to bring back up Stephanie. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Saturday is the contest that Lori has slaved over. Please go if you can. It's She's not done out. slaving. <laughs> I'm like just in the middle of sleeping. Um, also, to our guests, you're welcome to come back. So I'm going to like yeah, contradict what she just said. But you are welcome to come back as a guest as long as you would like. We would encourage you to join as a member if you are interested. But if any time, you're welcome to keep coming back. Um, we will, I heard our executive speaker series was great last week, so thank you to everyone who did participate. That's really, really awesome. Thank you for I wanted to just acknowledge the club for all your help and showing up early and setting up and getting things connected and the, spe the sound working. That was, that was key right there. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, I heard it was really good. I'm sad I couldn't be there. But our next one will be on June 5th. And Amy is still looking for someone to chair that, or did you get someone to? I'm still looking for someone to chair that. So it's, Lori took great notes, I heard. She has it all together. It's in a fairly note, simple, in just a arranging note. the volunteers, uh, speaking to the speaker. And we already have your speaker. Yeah, so everything's kind of lined up. You just kind of have to organize. It's great for your CL book. You need mm -hmm. that for your competent leader book, and mm -hmm. it's one of the requirements to Number six. complete that. And also make sure you oh, pay your... Oh, Olympo just raised his hand. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make sure you make sure you pay your dues to Matt Freeman. He'll start uh, chasing you down, and then executives. We have our meeting right now. We, I think someone's coming, trying to come in, so we'll go to the hard desk. Okay. Um, we're we're hi, our friend. Thank you guys. Thank you.